Xianqi, the Chinese form of chess. This is all about how to play that game. Hi, I'm Rick, and the chess website that you want to look at is ancientchess.com. That's going to give you a free download of this booklet, How to Play Chinese Chess. Same information I'm going to give you right here. You can have it in your hands, just print it out from the website. Okay, now, how to play Chinese chess. Let's look at the board. Interesting, huh? Eight squares by nine squares, kind of a gap in the middle. These lines don't go through. Doesn't matter. However, we are not going to be playing on the squares. We're going to be playing on the intersections. Here is your rook. Symbol means a chariot goes in the corner. Very much like our rook moves forward, backward, and sideways. Many spaces as you want to go, just like our rook. Here is the Chinese knight. Very much like our knight, it goes one forward, backward, or sideways, plus one diagonal. You can see that's the knight move, right? One on the line, one diagonal. One on the line, one diagonal. One on the line, one diagonal. Okay, but this piece can be blocked. If this piece is here, the knight cannot go through. So, the only difference between our knight and the Chinese knight is that the Chinese knight can be blocked by another piece that's right next to it. Next piece is the elephant. It moves two spaces diagonally. Where did I start out? Here? There, 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 and there. All right, two spaces diagonally. The elephant, notice that they connect. And notice that they can only get to seven points on the entire board because the elephant can't go over the river. This is the river. All the other creatures go over it without trouble. Elephant has to stay on his side of the board. This is the king's advisor, the scholar. He only moves one space diagonally, and he stays in this little nine-point fortress all the time. Okay, scholar, stay in there. This is the king. However, it's not a king, it's actually the general, the army general. He goes one space orthogonally, forward, backward, and sideways, the complement of the counselor, the scholar, who goes one space diagonally. Okay, and the whole setup is symmetrical. Notice these markings here. That helps you know where to set the other pieces up. This is the cannon. The cannon moves like a rook. Easy enough, right? Yee-haw! But, however, in order to capture, the cannon has to have another piece to jump over. So, for instance, if these two guys are here, and this enemy piece is here, this cannon can jump over this cannon and capture that one like that. Okay? Very simple. He has to jump over one piece and capture the other. Now, the cannon cannot... Let's see. The cannon cannot, from here, jump over a piece and just stay there. He can only jump over to capture. And the cannon cannot jump over two pieces and capture a piece on the other side. He can only capture a piece that's after jumping over one piece. So that's a cannon. Moves like a rook, jumps over a piece to capture. The pawns just move one space forward. And notice I'm putting them on these points. There are five of them. Just moves one space forward. When it gets over the river, it can also move one space sideways, forward or sideways, but never backward. And when it gets to the end, it does not promote, it just can move sideways. That's the Chinese pawn. Now, what do you need to know about winning this game? First of all, you need to know that the generals, or the general on this side, the governor on this side, cannot face each other. Illegal position. You've got to have something in between at all times. So, if this were the position, this uh, side of the board, the black, could not move sideways. It would be allowing the two to face each other. They would be in check in that way. So, that limits things a lot. For instance, this is checkmate. This rook is challenging the king here. This one is preventing him from moving sideways. Checkmate, no escape. Another thing about checkmate in the Chinese game is that you do not have to be in check. It can be a stalemate. If you have no legal move, 
you've lost the game. One more thing to show you that's different from the chess we play in uh, most places in the world. If you are in trouble, oh my gosh, this guy's going to check me in a second, and you want to put your opponent in perpetual check, 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 you are not allowed to do that. You've got to do something else. Uh, I guess I'll go over here. Huh, checkmate, sorry. Red loses because he's not allowed to put the opponent in perpetual check. It's just not permitted. Okay, so everything else is like the chess that we know, the international game, which is originally the European form of chess. You try to capture the fellow on the other side. Notice that some pieces are different. The general on the black side, the governor on this side. Also, the elephants are different. This is the symbol for elephant. This is the elephant on the other side. Its symbol means something a little different, but it's okay. It's the same piece. Moves two spaces diagonally. That's it. Please feel free to review this. Once again, this is how to play Xiangqi Chinese chess from ancientchess.com.